Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful afternoon with the authors. I'm here with Stephen J. Rubin. He has written the encyclopedia, the James Bond movie encyclopedia, and you are an author, a producer, a documentarian, a Hollywood historian. You wear a lot of hats. Tell us about the James Bond movie encyclopedia. Well, I've been writing about James Bond for about 40 years. Uh, I did the first behind-the-scenes history, which was published in 1981. It's called the James Bond Films uh, Behind-the-Scenes History. In 1990, I was approached by a, a publisher to do the James Bond movie encyclopedia, and I've been doing them ever since. This is the fourth edition. It's a really fun book to write because Bond is, is many different parts. You know, the women, the locations, the Bonds. Uh, the actions, the stunts, the, the trivia, villains. the villains, of course. And um, I, I love writing an encyclopedia because you can keep adding material using your computer without having to retype the book each time. I think that today, if we didn't have computers, I would never write a book like this. And then I spend about a year and a half um, looking for f uh, rare photos. I have over 400 photos in my book, many of them in color. And then we have uh, illustrations from some of the great Bond artists. Now, the franchise is so popular. Why does it remain relevant? At its core, the James Bond movie franchise is a family movie ex experience. You can take your 80-year-old grandmother, you can take your six-year-old, and you don't walk away feeling like you uh, did something wrong. You know, a lot of movies today aren't really for young people, and a lot of movies today are not for older people. Uh, the Bond movies have never changed in terms of the audience. Uh, they do not have the R rating. Uh, they don't show nudity or profanity. And I think they give you, uh, it's a perfect example of truth in advertising. You go to see a Bond movie, you're going to see nonstop action. You're going to see a lot of big set pieces, some fun interplay between the characters. And then, of course, you get some of the most, well, some of the most handsome men in movies and some of the most beautiful women in movies. What's to lose? Well, I know the Celebrating Act 2 audience would love to know your opinion, the best Bond. Okay, well, that's always an interesting question. Uh, generally, it's axiomatic that you love the Bond you grew up with. So in my case, it was Sean Connery. I saw Goldfinger was my first Bond movie. It still remains my favorite Bond movie, although I have to say Daniel Craig's Casino Royale is right up there with it. Um, I think Daniel Craig is the perfect Bond for the 21st century. Life has gotten tougher. The world's gotten more depressing. Uh, the action has to be more realistic, and uh, tossing off a Roger Moore one-liner today wouldn't fly. <laughs> so Daniel Craig, with his two-fisted uh, charm and his ability to play the action realistically, has been a big plus. And what about a couple of Bonds I'm going to throw out? Just your reaction, George Lazenby and David Niven. Well, George Lazenby... I thought was wonderful. So considering he had zero acting experience, George Lazenby I thought was very comfortable as James Bond. He, he really sold it. Uh, he should have gone on and played more Bonds, but he got the worst advice in the history of Hollywood. His agent said, Bond is done. Get out of there now. And so uh, I, I think that, that was just ridiculous. Um, David Niven? David Niven was James Bond in the spoof Casino Royale. And, he was the first prissy Bond. <laughs> you know, uh, that was a wacky movie because Woody Allen played his nephew, Jimmy Bond, and of course, Peter Sellers played the phony James Bond. Uh, it, was, it was a wildly, out, a wild, crazy spoof. With, with some great music, by the way. Oh, yeah. Well, the Look of Love song was wonderful. Um, you know, it's interesting, Charles K. Feldman, who produced that movie, was a top agent in Hollywood. He literally knew everybody, but he couldn't convince uh, Sean Connery to be James Bond because Sean Connery was already in the other camp, so he decided to do the spoof. And I think they had five directors and eight writers, and it really shows it. Stephen J. Rubin is the author of the James Bond movie encyclopedia. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Manny. Thank you. And I'm Manny Pacheco for Celebrating Act Two as we celebrate afternoon with the authors. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.